Did you ever notice in the 80s how the third movie in every horror franchise was in 3D? Friday the 13th 3D, Amityville Horror 3D, Jaws 3D. Well, because I am all about the 80s and because this happens to be the third video here in the Art Lab since we relaunched the channel, I felt it was appropriate to also make this video in 3D. Of course, to those of you viewing at home, it's not in 3D because as you may know, even though those movies were filmed in 3D and they were 3D in the theaters, when they were released on home video, the technology just didn't translate. So when you pop in your Jaws 3D VHS or Betamax, what you thought you were going to get was this. But what you ended up getting was this. But even though you won't be getting the full experience of all of these awesome 3D effects that I am literally going to be throwing at you, rest assured there will be plenty of three-dimensional excitement because in this video, I'm gonna show you the secrets behind creating anaglyphic 3D art. Are you ready? Then join me, Scott Circlin, in the art lab. Time to suit up. Ever since I was a kid, I have been fascinated by anaglyphic 3D imagery. I would spend hours poring over 3D comics. I even used to collect these Jaws 3D trading cards. They were super cool, with photos from the movie on one side and awesome three-dimensional illustrations by comic book artist Joe DeVito on the back. I even attempted to make my own 3D art with varying degrees of success. But back then, I didn't have the technology or the understanding of how anaglyphic 3D worked. Don't worry if you don't either. I'm going to show you what you need to know, how it works, and who knows, you may even want to try your hand at creating your own 3D art. But first, we have to ask ourselves a question. What is an anaglyph? Anaglyphic 3D is a stereoscopic technique that creates the illusion of three-dimensional depth in a two-dimensional image by way of using color filters. This technique uses two images of the same scene taken from slightly different angles and combines them into a single image that appears to have depth. To create an anaglyphic 3D image, two images are typically tinted in red and cyan colors respectively. These images are then superimposed on top of each other with the red image on the left and the cyan image on the right. When viewed through anaglyphic spectacles, which have lenses that filter out the opposite color of each eye, the brain is able to fuse the two images to create the perception of depth. The red and cyan color combination is used because the human eye is particularly sensitive to these colors, which allows for a clearer, more convincing 3D effect. Anaglyphic 3D has been used for various applications including motion pictures, video games, and print media. So now that we know all about anaglyphs, let's see if we can do some experiments and recreate them at the level of these classic comics and cards. As always, we need to set a few ground rules, so let me get out my trusty pointer. Rule number one. Respect the original. In this case, we're not really basing our project on any particular product or piece of art, but we do want to keep our creation reminiscent of classic 3D comics and prints. Rule number two, whenever possible, use common everyday tools and materials. I'll leave affiliate links to the materials we're going to use in the description, including the 3D glasses, but in this project, we're using pretty basic stuff. And rule number three, make it your own. Feel free to give the 3D treatment to whatever art you want. You can even use photographs. Now for this video, the tools we're going to be using are mostly digital. I'll be using Photoshop, but you can use whatever photo editing software you choose. But before we log into the computer, I want to demonstrate the basic concept for what we're going to be doing using some analog tools. For that, you're going to need a red and cyan pen. The cyan is kind of hard to come by. It's a combination of blue and green. Kind of looks like this. I'll leave a link to where you can find this particular set in the description. You'll also need some copy paper, some cardstock, 
and either scissors or an X-Acto knife. Let's begin by cutting out some basic shapes in our cardstock. I created some asteroids and a spaceship in the style of the classic video game. Mostly because they're very basic shapes, but let's be honest, they're pretty freaking cool. I'm going to use the stencils I created to trace my red and cyan line art. Here are the main things to remember. We're assuming you're wearing your 3D glasses correctly with the red over your left eye and the blue over your right. You're going to trace your stencils first with the red pen and then you're going to move the stencil over slightly and trace it again with the cyan pen. Here's the important part. If you want your image to pop out, be sure that the blue tracing is on the right. If you want it to fade into the background, make sure the blue outline is on the left. Now, just continue tracing the different elements in your scene, making sure some elements come forward and some elements go backwards. Not too bad, here, have a look. Oh, I forgot most of you aren't wearing 3D glasses. Anyway, this is a good start, but let's take it to the next level. Now, I have always wanted to create a 3D comic, but it is a lot of work to convert a whole comic book to 3D. So, I'm doing the next best thing. For the release of the current issue of my Kids vs. Zombie comic, Young and the Dead, I wanted to create a variant cover of each of the five issues by different artists. When I got the artwork for one of the issues by the awesome Federica Marchetti, I knew I wanted to create a 3D print based on her art. This illustration has so much depth, it is the perfect piece to give a 3D makeover. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. The first thing you need to do is start with your black line art on a transparent background. It's best to use black and white art or photos, because when you view everything through red and blue glasses, colors tend to look muddy. When you set up your file, make sure you're working in CMYK. Now, cut out all of the areas that you want to appear to have depth and place them on separate layers. Next, place each of these layers in a separate folder. You'll want to create a copy of each element that you want to be in 3D and keep that in the same folder as the original. Make sure each layer is set to multiply. Set the lock function on your layers panel on both the original and the copy. Now, fill the original layer with this formula for blue. Cyan, 60%, magenta, 0%, yellow, 19%, and black, K, 0%. Then fill the copy with this formula for red. Cyan, 3%, magenta, 100%, yellow, 100%, and black, Again, K, 1%. Next, select the blue or cyan layer. If you want the image in this folder to be more in the forefront, select Control on Windows or Command on Mac, and use the arrow key to move the layers slightly to the right. The more you move it, the more it will stick out when viewing. However, if you move it too much, the effect won't work. If you want the layer to recede into the background, simply move the blue or cyan layer to the left of the red layer. 
If you're a member of our Patreon community, I'll be uploading my layered Photoshop files so you can see exactly how I organize my files. In addition, I'll break these steps down on my newsletter, where you can also get future updates and freebies like the Comic Maker Starter Kit, packed full of templates, brushes, fonts, and additional assets for making comics. Link in the description. That's basically it. I've also created a third grayscale layer, but that's not required. All you have to do is repeat this process for the other layers that you want to make 3D, adjusting the blue layer to the right or to the left in different intervals, depending on where you want it to appear in 3D. You can also move the red layer in the opposite direction instead of the blue. It helps to have a pair of anaglyphic 3D glasses on hand while you're designing your print. Again, I'll provide a link to where you can get those online. <laughs> you really need to see this to believe it. In addition to this print, I've created a number of 3D art prints that I've bundled together. I'm offering a limited number of them in an exclusive bundle for a discounted price on my website at surfworks.com. 3D glasses are included. Here's a little preview of some of my three-dimensional creations. Check them out. There you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process of taking 2D art and adding a whole other dimension. Maybe this has even inspired you to create your own anaglyphic 3D art. If you want to see me reverse engineer more of these retro inspired artifacts, then reach out and press that like and subscribe button. And if you're like Jaws here and you're hungry for another video, you can find that right up here.